All right, how we doing? Welcome to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Deepak Chona, founder of SportsMed Analytics. Pumped to be teaming up with Fantasy Pros all season long to bring you the very best injury analysis in the game. Now today we're going through the major injury concerns coming off of week three, and trust me, there are winning edges to be gained. But before we dive in, if you want a chance to win a signed Jalen Waddle Miami Dolphins jersey courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now, comment below on this video, and that's it. We will be announcing a winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and so that you can claim your prize. And now let's dive right in. Starting with Mac Jones, quarterback for the New England Patriots. He had an MRI today dealing with a high severity, high ankle sprain. The fact that he's getting a second opinion means it's borderline for whether he should have surgery or not. These average four to six weeks for position players, but quarterbacks can sometimes push that up to two to four. Either way, you're very likely to see a multi-week absence here. If Mac Jones has surgery, expect him back in about four weeks. Next up, Dalvin Cook running back for the Minnesota Vikings. He dislocated his shoulder again, and this is really bad news for his season. He has an unrepaired tear in the labrum of his shoulder, which is like a bumper cushion that makes the shoulder more stable. Having a tear makes it probably slightly greater risk to begin with, but then when he dislocated yesterday, he very likely worsened the existing tear, making the shoulder in turn even more unstable. This usually takes one to two weeks to bounce back acutely. He may even get a chance to play week three or week four without a huge performance drop off, but there's a very high chance that this pops up again in season. I'm investing big in Alexander Madison if I can. Next up is JK Dobbins running back for the Baltimore Ravens. Nine touches is about what we expect from a young running back coming off of this injury. Usually the ramp up takes about four games, so I'd expect the training wheels to come off around about week seven. When you factor in the typical performance dip that happens with this surgery for running backs, but then also Dobbins' athletic metrics and his production, our data points to the second half of the season when we anticipate him looking at 85 to 90% of his old self. Today's workload suggests he's very much on that track. Tua Tagovailoa, next up, quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. As it turns out, this probably wasn't really a concussion concern. It sounds more like back spasms were actually the issue per some reports. Most commonly, quarterbacks can get these under control in season. Now there is a recurrence risk to watch out for, but for a pocket QB, missing time is still relatively uncommon. The short week for the Dolphins with an upcoming Thursday night game does work against him, but overall we'd lean slightly towards Tua playing week four. Next up, star running back for the Detroit Lions, DeAndre Swift. Swift has been playing through a low severity, low ankle sprain, and he just re-aggravated that on Sunday. On top of that, he's now dealing with a sprain to his shoulder. These low ankle sprains are most commonly played through without missed time by running backs, but these moderate severity shoulder sprains, which it sounds like Swift is dealing with now, generally mean a two to four week absence. If Swift misses any time, with the Lions having that week six bye, it wouldn't be surprising for them to plan on him returning in week seven. That should give his ankle and shoulder enough time to heal up, so we would expect a full strength version of himself at that point. Next up, Michael Thomas, wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints. Reporting it was initially a foot injury, but the details were a little bit unclear so far. The one thing we can say for sure is that he was testing it before going to the locker room, which itself suggests relatively mild severity. Some reports have suggested a toe injury, the most common of which would be turf toe. That averages zero to one game missed for wide receivers, so overall seems relatively likely that Thomas will be out there for week four. Next up, Jarvis Landry, wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints. Landry appeared to suffer a foot sprain on a play in which he twisted trying to catch a ball. He was progressively downgraded from probable to questionable to doubtful to return on Sunday, and that progression itself suggests a borderline severity injury. We'd be surprised if this made him miss any extended amount of time, but gonna have to watch practice reports to know for sure. Next up, David Montgomery running back for the Chicago Bears. Video looked like a mechanism for a high ankle sprain, but then they're calling him day to day, so he's probably missing zero to one game. If I had to bet now, I'd guess one, 
week because we'll know a lot more by how he practices Wednesday and Thursday. Next up is Justin Herbert, quarterback for the Chargers. Truly impressive how Herbert hung in there, even though you could see how much pain he was in with each hit. The good news for fantasy owners and for Chargers fans alike is that this should improve significantly over the course of the next three weeks, with each being noticeably better than the previous. The exception would be if Herbert takes a big hit to the affected rib. Now, as far as we can know and as far as we can see, that didn't seem to happen yesterday, so Herbert is likely only getting better from here. Next up, Garrett Wilson, wide receiver for the New York Jets. Wilson took a big hit to the ribs and after evaluation was actually able to come back into week three's game. These don't usually turn into lingering problems for wide receivers, so I would expect to see a full practice and near full strength performance for week four from Garrett Wilson. And that does it for this edition of the Winning Edge interpretation of the NFL Injury Report. Thank you again for watching. I am Dr. Deepak Chona with Sports Med Analytics, here teaming up with fantasy pros all season long so that you can have the best injury analysis in the game. Now remember, if you want a chance to win that signed Jalen Waddle Miami Dolphins jersey, courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction, you need to subscribe to that Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now. Comment below on this video, and that's it. We will be announcing a winner right here on the channel. So make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and so you can claim your prize. See you next time. Deepak Shona signing off. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.